Hello. Let's talk about quantization and conservation of charge. So this is building on our idea of you know just electric interactions. We're trying to get a little more detailed about this. So to start with, this idea that charge is quantized, and so what that means is that every observable charge is an intermultiple of the electron charge. And so this is uh, what Millikan demonstrated in his oil drop experiment. Basically, what he had was a setup where you know he had a situation where you could put basically a droplet of oil which carried some electric charge in an area of space between basically two poles kind of of a battery more or less so this thing has some positive charge on it so because of this we get gravity working downwards and we get this electric force working upwards. And they could get these oil drops to hover. And what they found when they did this, they could, for reasons we're not going to get into, determine the charge on this oil drop. And they would always find the charge in the oil drop was some multiple of this fundamental charge. And they got it to about within 1% of this, which is you know, no small feat. And so you can find charges in nature. You can find charges Q. You could find you know something that looks like two times the electron charge. You could find a charge that looks like, you know, seven, that's not a seven, I wanted to draw four. Seven times the electron charge. You could find a charge that looks like, you know, 26 times the electron charge. So all of these can exist. What you cannot find, you can't find something that's two and a half times the electron charge. You can't find something that's, you know, negative 12.7 times the electron charge. And you can't find something that is you know, two-thirds the electron charge. At least, you can't find it isolated in nature. Um, you, we think that there exist fractional objects with a fractional charge, but you can't isolate them. So, these things found in nature, these things not found in nature. And so now let's say, for example, you had some homework assigned on this and had to do a problem somehow related to quantization of charge. Well, what you would find is that any old charge Q looks like some number N times the electron charge. So this is some charge. This is basically a number of electrons. And this is the charge per electron, the fundamental charge. You'll notice it was scribbled on the other screen a second ago. But what we're basically saying is that um, if I take any charge, Q, and divide it by N, the number of electrons, I get just this fundamental charge. I get this, this ratio is always going to give me E. Alternatively, I could say that Q over E tells me how many electrons. The charge per electron, or the charge rather, divided by, so multiply by the charge per electron, gives me number of electrons. Kind of like a unit conversion problem, sinisterly so. Now, this electron charge, this E, is a tiny number, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. Itty bitty, tiny. Now, it does mean, though, that because we're dealing with such small numbers for charge or such large numbers for electrons, that it's going to be important to talk about scientific notation. So if you need a refresher on that, you can go find the screencast on scientific notation. So this is a kind of important fundamental idea, and it helps us model what happens, because now we can think of everything involving charges as the motion of electrons. And so that's going to be useful. Now, one other idea we want to deal with is this idea of conservation of charge. This idea that charge, much like energy, is conserved. So it can neither be created nor destroyed. It can only be transferred. So if we think back to our tape lab, we had this T-tape and B-tape. And now when we started, we discharged them. 
So that means that this combination right now has no net charge. So zero coulombs of charge on my T and B tape. Total charge. That totally says charge. Those are letters. So now when I separate this, we know that we wound up with we wound it up wound up with English. With charged objects. So let's say for a second the T tape were positive. Well, if the T tape were positive, so let's say that it lost three electrons, which we wouldn't really be able to measure because that's a tiny amount of charge, but go with it for a second. Well, we can then ask the question, you know, how much charge had to be on the B tape? Well, we know that the total charge for this has to stay the same. And the total charge Q is the, Q, the charge on the T tape plus the charge on the B tape, and that has to be equal to zero. So that means that there had to be three electrons, basically, that wound up on the B tape. So in this case, the story is more or less that this, these electrons were pulled off of the B tape, or pulled off of the T tape by the B tape. So it's not that the T tape spontaneously became positive because of friction, or the B tape spontaneously became negative because of friction. When they were pulled apart and they had that contact, the charge was moved from the T tape to the B tape. So we think of the electron as moving. So we can solve a lot of problems like this, um, just kind of paying attention to what happens to charge in our system. One kind of problem that is very common is a problem involving spheres of charge, specifically conducting spheres. So if I imagine this conducting sphere having a charge of minus 10 electrons, minus 10 times the electron charge. This has a charge of plus 17 times the electron charge. I can ask, what will happen if these two spheres are brought together so that they touch? They need to actually touch, though. Darn it. Brought together so they touch. And then are separated. You know, it's a classic Romeo and Juliet story. Conducting sphere sees conducting sphere. Conducting sphere meets conducting sphere for a late night tryst. Conducting sphere and conducting sphere separated and accidentally kill themselves. Happens all the time. All right. Well, if you look at this case, our whole claim is that the total amount of charge stays the same. So the total amount of charge here is 10E minus 17E, which is minus... 7e. Now, in the interest of not making a problem that's physically impossible and contradicts something I told you 10 seconds ago, we're going to change this value so that it doesn't create an issue for me. Look at that. If you know why this was going to be a problem, feel free to send me an email. Don't send me an email. Just you know, post it or something. Um, if you don't see why, it's gonna pro why it was going to be a problem, we'll get there in a second. Well, when these touch, we know that two conductors that touch share charge. It spreads out all over them, right? So in this case, the total charge smeared all over this thing is still minus 8E. And it's just, or, sorry, hold on. I know how to use arithmetic and signs. This was a minus, and this was a plus. Math is hard, guys. Reading is harder. This is actually positive. This is positive. There we go. Much better. All right. So this charge is just smear, smear, smeared out over this whole thing. Just like when we were talking, touching the Van de Graaff generator, the charge from the sphere would you know, cover up anyone who is touching it. That's why your hair was sticking out. Now, if these are identical, then that charge that was smeared out over the both of them, when they get separated, is going to be split. How is it going to be split? Well, if they're identical, it's going to split evenly. So then each of these has to have half of the total charge.
the Apollo. You could, if you wanted, try to be very clever and talk about what would happen if they're not identical spheres, and we'll save that for a later physics class. For now, we just want to think, all right, if conducting spheres touch, they share charge, it spreads out over them, and when we separate them, that charge then splits. Okay, so two big ideas for this. Charge is quantized, so every, every observable charge we see in nature is an integer multiple of the electron charge, that 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. And charge is conserved. It can either be created nor destroyed, so we're always just moving charge around. For you know a closed system, the total charge has to stay constant, just like with energy. Okay, have fun.